This special episode of the Bitcoin Show is brought to you by Mt. Gox, M-T-G-O-X dot com and bit-pay dot com, B-I-T-Pay dot com and Mezzy Grill, M-E-Z-E Grill dot com and Bitbrew, Bitbrew dot net, not dot com. Uh, preaching to the choir here. Um, 
Very rapid transaction. It's highly redundant. Uh, your bank probably uh, stores your uh, digital dollars in two, three, five locations. We store your bitcoins in 10,000. Um, it is highly secure using well-known cryptographic uh, algorithms and technologies, uh, public-private uh, ECDSA uh, key pairs under uh, PIN the system. Uh, Satoshi, uh, his, uh, Satoshi's uh, uh, key observation was not cryptography. What Satoshi did was Satoshi took off the shelf proven, well understood cryptography and put it together in a way that uh, no one had ever seen before. So uh, uh, when at, people ask me what Satoshi invented, it's the Nakamoto blockchain, as, uh, as we call it. Um, so he used uh, well-proven algorithms to uh, underpin the system. Um, resilient, if uh, any of these nodes go down, that's not a problem at all. Uh, pretty much every single person who runs Bitcoin has the entirety of the blockchain history on their system. Um, it's self-supporting, and what I mean by that is uh, Satoshi paid very close attention to the incentives that underpin the entire system, so that uh, miners are incented to secure the transactions for Bitcoin users, yet uh, miners would be nothing and have no money without users using the system. Um, there are a whole lot, a whole host of other incentives, but that's sort of the broad strokes. Um, it's decentralized, which is uh, uh, of great value to a great many people. You don't have a central bank just uh, waking up and deciding one day that your money supply has doubled, and therefore uh, probably uh, you know having the value of the existing money. Um, it's usable by anyone, anywhere. It's uh, cross-border. Cross, uh, cross culture, you know, hopefully soon interplanetary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it is a fixed and predictable money supply. Emphasis on predictable. One of the uh, big things that uh, businesses are complaining about these days is, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what your politics are, it's regulatory uncertainty. You just don't know what the uh, crazy politicians are going to pass next. So you can't plan 12 months ahead, 24 months ahead, five years ahead. In Bitcoin, you can. Next. So uh, just in a short word uh, about uh, a couple things that uh, people uh, often criticize Bitcoin about. Uh, one of the things they say, uh, unlike gold, Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. Bosh. <laughs> Services have value, and the Bitcoin network provides a highly distributed, highly secure transactional service for its users. So that is a very, very big, powerful value. That's the value of Bitcoin itself, is the network. And uh, deflation, um, I'm not an economist, I'm not a social scientist, and I'm not here to uh, defend inflationary or deflationary policies. The, uh, but uh, the thing that people need to understand is that most uh, expectations of deflationary currents, or excuse me, uh, most people, I'm skipping down the point, most people's inbred expectations are that prices always go up. And uh, so, as uh, the economist uh, Russ Roberts uh, mentioned, uh, a deflationary economy, it would be weird. But uh, it, would, it would be not what people expected, but that doesn't mean that it would be necessarily wrong or bad. Um, most studies about deflation are built around assumptions related to debt. And uh, Bitcoin, is, you don't create Bitcoins by issuing debt from a central bank. Therefore, uh, most of those studies aren't necessarily as applicable as uh, they uh, people might think. And in general, uh, economics is a hotly debated social science, and uh, uh, there are major schools of thought on both sides of uh, the equation, and I don't think that anyone says that one side is 100% right. So, uh, Bitcoin today 
This uh, is sort of a uh, response to a lot of uh, journalist uh, questions that I've gotten um, and have been misreported all over uh, the web and back. Um, so where are we? What is Bitcoin really uh, working like right now? What are our expectations? Because it's important to set expectations properly. It is very early in Bitcoin's life. We just started a couple of years ago. So we are not going, we're going to have many, many bumps in the road. It's, uh, I, I stole this uh, phrase or line from Gavin. It's a, uh, uh, from I think his uh, Ignite talk. It's a startup currency, and just like a startup business, there's a huge chance for failure. And I'm not pointing to any one specific problem. I'm just speaking generally that you have to figure that into the equation that it's a very risky venture. Um, the, the economy, the, the size, the total size of Bitcoins is uh, very small. Um, uh, as of, uh, I think earlier today when I pulled those numbers, we're looking at about 7,000 transactions per day. And uh, if you uh, multiply the, uh, the uh, current share price by the total number of Bitcoins, you get uh, $81 million, which is, you know, it might sound like a lot. I'd love to have $81 million in my pocket. But uh, to anyone at a bank, that's, that's pennies. You know, that's, that's bit cents. It's nothing. <laughs> so uh, one small trader can cause the price to double in a day with a big Bitcoin buy. And they can cause the price to halve in a day with a big Bitcoin sell. So, uh, you know, set your expectations properly. Um, the core system, uh, Gavin uh, really uh, covered this pretty well. The core system is really uh, secure, um, you know, I'm not going to knock on wood and wake up the dog, but uh, you know, knock on wood, uh, we're uh, looking pretty good so far, the public key, uh, public-private key cryptography in the uh, core system assigning transactions is, uh, so far, uh, has not been uh, successfully assailed. On the other hand, uh, Bitcoin websites so far have been sort of one small, one, two-person shops, and uh, they didn't really uh, pay too much attention to security, um, especially when you're talking about, oh, all of a sudden, my website is securing millions of dollars <coughs> worth of assets. And that's a uh, PHP script they coded uh, while drinking Jack Daniel. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there, there's been sort of a, uh, a disconnect there, um, in part because uh, the RPC interface, which uh, Gavin mentioned, uh, is it makes it so easy to automate transactions and uh, that's one of the things I love about Bitcoin is you can just download the software and all of a sudden you have this interface that can move money around the world and you can come up with the most fantastic business ideas and uh, just you know in your garage uh, drinking Jack Daniels maybe um, you can uh, come up with a uh, really wonderful business idea launch it and uh, people have, and they do. Um, so uh, that's that's really uh, sort of the 10 second snapshot of where we are today. Uh, there's plenty of promise, especially in this room. I've been talking with some of the businesses that uh, are uh, some of the exchanges and the other businesses here today, and I've, uh, I'm really pleased with what I've uh, been hearing and seeing. Um, it uh, definitely adds a level of confidence. Um, where are we with uh, the Bitcoin network? We are uh, about 8,000 nodes that accept incoming connections. That's not total network size. That's uh, what I, I'll dub important network size. These are the nodes that uh, we need in order for everyone else to be able to connect. Because if you don't accept incoming connections on the network, there is no network. Um, in terms of what's available storage-wise, bandwidth-wise, the, uh, the network is uh, not very loaded at all. I think that uh, transaction volume could increase significantly and, uh, you know, the network wouldn't blink an eye. However, uh, we, we desperately need uh, some uh, websites and some volunteers to help monitor the network health. Right now, it's largely an ad hoc effort. Uh, some coordinated over uh, IRC and email, that sort of thing. Um, there have been a couple interesting websites, but uh, uh, 
we need your help, we need your ideas to uh, keep the network running. And uh, we need more peer-to-peer uh, -peer nodes in general. Um, if you can uh, spare the uh, bandwidth and the network, then uh, run a network node that accepts incoming connections and uh, you're going to help your fellow Bitcoin users. Uh, mining. Where is uh, mining today? Mining is uh, very highly competitive, as uh, you might expect, because there's a very, very low barrier to entry. You just download some software, and uh, you're helping secure the network. And in exchange, you're receiving some uh, bit sense. If there is an astounding amount of uh, network power collectively in securing each Bitcoin transaction. And uh, having uh, worked with uh, some what I'll call the legacy banks, um, they're, and as you probably read in the headlines, their systems aren't as secure as you might have suspected. Um, a very, a fascinating new development which uh, really uh, makes me happy is uh, there's something called Pita Pool, which uh, helps address the uh, network effect of people centralizing their mining work into uh, a few big pools. Um, as you might know, there are about three big pools, DeepBit, Slushes, and BBC Guild, which uh, serve to uh, validate over 50% of the transactions. And then there's uh, quite a few other pools sort of in the, the other category. Um, so uh, that, that was a, a really pleasing development. On, uh, and just a uh, quick word on botnets. Um, the stealing resources, you know, very bad. But, uh, you know, I, I really don't think that that's going to be a huge ongoing problem because uh, when you wind up uh, stealing someone's computer to mine, their uh, electricity and their, uh, their computer runs really hot. It makes it really obvious that your computer's been compromised. So there, there's not a whole lot of uh, profit in that short term. I hope. Anonymity. Sorry, Bitcoins aren't anonymous. It is more private and more anonymous than uh, your credit card or PayPal, and, but it is uh, less private and less anonymous than just a face-to-face -face cash transaction. So uh, again, you have to uh, set your expectations properly. But true anonymity is very, very, very hard. You uh, Tor uh, helps a little bit, but uh, to give one example, uh, even if you're using Tor, it's completely obvious to your ISP that you're using Bitcoin because the Bitcoin protocol looks quite a bit differently from, uh, you know, surfing to CNN.com or something like that. So uh, unless you're very careful, uh, and this is almost a direct quote from uh, Dan Kaminsky's presentation, which I highly recommend. Unless you're very, very careful, assume a motivated attacker may link your IP address to your Bitcoin transactions. So, and motivated means they're, you know, they're snooping your internet connection, they're uh, loading malware onto your computer. So uh, that's how you protect yourself is through the, uh, the normal means of antivirus software and, and familiar computer security. Uh, community and trust. Uh, due diligence, checking into the websites that you're sending bitcoins to, understanding who you're paying. Uh, just because it's a virtual currency doesn't mean that uh, you can uh, give your money to uh, someone named Tom Williams in the West Indies and that they'll keep your bitcoins absolutely safe. So uh, trust remains paramount and using a virtual currency over the internet doesn't change that at all. So make sure you know who you trust. Make sure that uh, they are competent to uh, secure your bitcoins. Um, you know, regulatory compliance, that's uh, a, uh, a, often a sticky issue with uh, uh, some of the more uh, freedom-minded people in uh, the bitcoin community. But uh, it's, a, it's definitely an issue for businesses that want to accept bitcoins. So uh, make sure what's going on there. Um, and finally, a uh, uh, shout out to Nanotube in the uh, front uh, here, who uh, created uh, Bitcoin OTC and building the uh, GPG-based uh, web of trust. You can uh, log on to, is it bitcoinotc.com? 
Bitcoin-ODC.com, and uh, that'll uh, tell you how to uh, start building an identity which you can integrate into a web of trust and uh, begin to uh, interact and build trust with uh, people that you may not have met uh, directly face to face, but uh, over time, you know, just like you build trust anywhere else, um, that'll help identify the person with whom you're dealing with. Um, Bitcoin versus the press. Uh, there's been uh, you know, plenty of misreporting and uh, totally uh, absent fact-checking and uh, loads of uh, stories. Uh, my favorites are uh, you know, Bitcoins are anonymous and untraceable. The uh, Bitcoin wiki has said no, no, no for uh, quite a while, uh, but uh, apparently they were unable to perform a Google search. Um, you know, the, another, uh, another couple gems, uh, you know, $9 million stolen from Mt. Gox, or uh, the Bitcoin value dropped to zero, none of which are true. But my favorite, my favorite came from the TurboTax blog that said uh, Bitcoins are tax free. <laughs> <laughs> advice following that advice. <laughs> But uh, really, I mean, you know, the, you know, there have been some howlers, but what does this tell us? You know, number one, Bitcoin is just very complex. It's, it's difficult to understand. It's difficult to explain to other people. And uh, that's really a challenge for us as a community is to better communicate what's going on. And uh, really, uh, you know, it demonstrates the need for uh, some uh, motivated individuals to uh, help work on a Bitcoin PR effort which is uh, something that I'd like to see. Uh, moving on to the Bitcoin client. Um, in my opinion, and, and stress this, I'm only speaking for myself, not speaking for uh, Gavin or anyone else, um, is uh, it's only really uh, for power users. I don't think that you know Uncle Joe and Aunt Tilly are going to understand how to properly secure a wallet and run a peer-to-peer -peer node on a network that may be subject to denial of service attacks. Um, but that said, absolutely, uh, the user experience needs work. Uh, I think Gavin uh, covered well the uh, transaction fee issue, which right now we uh, just sort of uh, threw a dart at a wall and, and blatantly hoped that we got uh, the uh, default transaction fees right. Um, we had to lower them and then lower them again just because Bitcoin value kept going up and up. And uh, that's really not the way we should be doing things. The market should be setting the proper transaction fee level. Um, and uh, in rare cases, I don't want to alarm anybody because this is truly a rare case, but in rare cases, uh, transactions may uh, simply never confirm. And that... Uh, and it requires you to go in with some sort of esoteric tools and uh, fix that issue. And so that, that leads to a disappointing user experience, to say the least. Um, and uh, SPV mode, that stands for Simplified Payment Verification, uh, which is uh, sort of shorthand for uh, just putting Bitcoin on your mobile device. We don't expect that a full peer-to-peer -peer node with the full one gigabyte blockchain and, and et cetera will be uh, uh, realistic to run on a smartphone. So what you're going to look, be looking at is a more lightweight client that uh, can access the Bitcoin network, connect, send transactions, receive transactions, and disconnect. And uh, right now, uh, Mike Hearn at Google, uh, who works on the Bitcoin J client, is uh, focusing on that direction. Um, another thing that uh, what we have, uh, just sort of overview of uh, not just software, but monetary tools in general, we have, you know, stating the obvious, we have basic transactions and exchanges that are highly automated. We have excellent APIs that are very easy to use. Uh, pretty much every uh, programming language you can imagine, there's uh, some way to access uh, Bitcoin and perform transactions. Um, unfortunately, uh, we do lack uh, some tools like uh, you know, being able to uh, short or to uh, option Bitcoin prices for the future, futures, that sort of thing, um, I believe would be beneficial to uh, the Bitcoin ecosystem and make Bitcoin a healthier monetary tool. 
So uh, looking, uh, that's sort of Bitcoin today, uh, but uh, let's uh, look at the future. Uh, challenges. Uh, bullet point number one, uh, Gavin, I think, uh, covered really well. Um, it's, it's just not sexy to uh, fix bugs and do the important grunt work that is necessary to keep financial software safe, secure, and uh, working. So, uh, you know, we're definitely looking for uh, people interested in QA, interested in helping out that effort. Even uh, so much as if you're willing to run the latest uh, Git version, which is the not yet released version of the software, um, I, strong, I strongly believe from my work on the kernel that the internet is the biggest test lab in the entire world. We need to make use of that. Um, another uh, challenge uh, in general is uh, the, uh, the uh, paradox of the decentralized nature versus the network effect. In uh, broad strokes, network effect simply means that uh, uh, Amazon.com is huge. It has all the books that you want, so everyone goes to Amazon. And competitors have a really, really tough time because everyone goes to Amazon. eBay is similar. There are, there are other startups, but eBay is uh, where everyone goes to sell. So network effects, you see that in uh, pools, for example, mining pools where uh, a lot of people just collect into the, uh, the bigger mining pools. And uh, it, it affects pretty much anything decentralized. There is a pull towards a, uh, a monopoly in power or size or pick your attribute. And uh, some amount of uh, self-policing is required. And uh, I don't mean, uh, I'm not talking about laws here, I'm just talking about network health. Um, we need to be able to uh, rapidly address core security bugs. And so far, uh, I think that uh, uh, Gavin and the dev team and uh, a lot of the, uh, our uh, helpers on uh, IRC, which we really depend on in uh, Pound Bitcoin Dev, have uh, really been uh, doing yeoman's work, but uh, we could do better um, for a piece of financial software. There ought to be, I think, a you know ideally some sort of dedicated security team. And uh, similarly, uh, if there's an issue in network health, we need to rapidly address that as well before it becomes a problem. If there's a uh, DOS on the network, we need to notice that and take action almost as soon as it happens, ideally. And, uh, and previously mentioned, uh, you know, we're, we're a bunch of geeks, we're a bunch of hackers, and, uh, you know, we, we all like to write code, and none of us are uh, PR people. And Bitcoin can use some more PR people. So uh, that's, that's a Bitcoin challenge going forward, so that we uh, don't have, uh, you know, U.S. Senators uh, squawking to the press and having uh, silly uh, statements uh, run unchallenged. Um, specifically, uh, challenges uh, scaling up um, as uh, transaction rates increase, sort of fewer and fewer people can afford to run peer-to-peer -peer nodes. You know, I think that uh, it'll probably wind up that not everyone runs the full Bitcoin client. Most people would probably prefer to use the smartphone client, and that'll leave, uh, you know, enthusiasts, miners, which I, I left off the list, uh, wallet providers, etc being uh, the people who are running the full Bitcoin nodes. Uh, network and disk, uh, they, they really won't be uh, an issue for some time. And so this is, you know, a year or more into the future. Um, block database size is beginning to uh, become a problem. In particular, bringing up a full node takes uh, hours, days, uh, if you're uh, really unlucky. And uh, some work is uh, going on to address that problem. The future, that's awesome. Um, it works right now, Bitcoin works right now, which says a whole lot considering all of the uh, people who are trying to uh, test the system, stress the system, you know, uh, steal currency, all the things that people try to do with US dollars. Um, you know, we have the same problems in Bitcoin, except they're, uh, they're now all automated and over the internet. And it works, that's, that's big. 
Um, there is uh, plenty of room to grow even with the current software before you know any of these challenges uh, I think become major problems. Um, the uh, websites, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I've been talking to some of the guys, some of the vendors around here. Um, they're definitely uh, made paying more attention to uh, security and engineering than maybe the first generation of Bitcoin websites did. Um, they're they're realizing that you know 10,000 bitcoins is actually worth a whole lot, whereas uh, when some of the earlier websites started, 10,000 bitcoins. That, that paid for a pizza, and that was about it. So Bitcoin has gone very far and uh, very, in a short amount of time, I guess. Um, thinking sort of outside of Bitcoin itself, uh, Bitcoin is open source software, so people can and have started their own global currencies. Uh, Bitcoin is, uh, as, at least as I'm claiming, people uh, can... Uh, you know, dispute this, but I think it's the first global currency which has major implications all over the world. Just It's just fun to think about. And uh, will Bitcoin spark other global currencies? Will Bitcoin spark other blockchain, Nakamoto blockchain currencies? There is uh, already a Neem coin and a couple other, you know, startup currencies based on the Bitcoin technology. Will one of those become more attractive than Bitcoin itself, um, you know, only the future will tell. The, uh, you know, the main thing that uh, Bitcoin has going for it right now is that, uh, uh, number one, everyone is invested in the current system, i.e. the network effect, and uh, number two, uh, Satoshi really, really thought hard about the incentives and collectively the community seems to agree with him. So uh, you have uh, big hurdles starting another currency, but it's open source. The source is out there, and uh, fantastic things uh, can come from it. And uh, will we see Bitcoin-specific banking regulations? Because this is a, uh, a brand new thing that no one's ever seen before. The, you know, uh, different governments might say Bitcoin is stored value, or it isn't, or it's a commodity, or it's a currency. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to live through the politicians figuring that out as uh, we go along. So uh, I predict that there will be a Bitcoin specific law. Hopefully it's not a banning, but it's a, this is how you uh, treat Bitcoin. And uh, that's really, uh, you know, just in general, uh, what I think is uh, a really bright future. Bitcoin has a lot of room to grow. It has a fantastic, highly secure technology backing it. And, uh, you know, the future is uh, this room. A special thanks to our sponsors, the first Mt. Gox, mtgox.com. You know them by now. They are the largest exchange for Bitcoins. They are now taking the British pound, Australian dollars, and Canadian dollar should be here any day now. The euro is now here with the Bitomat acquisition. Mt. Gox mobile app is now on the Android market. It allows you to take Bitcoins on the go. And finally, with the USB security device, the YubiKey, it protects your account even on compromised computers. And brought to you by BitPay, that's B-I-T, Dash Pay. They are the official uh, merchant processor for the Bitcoin conference. They allow you to accept payment in Bitcoin and receive US dollars instead. Super simple to integrate into your website. We did it. And finally, they allow you to generate QR codes, invoices, and more. Just a full inclusive merchant solution for Bitcoin. And Mezzi Grill, uh, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. They're now serving breakfast. They're right here on 8th Avenue at 55th Street in New York City, just a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle. They are the first brick and mortar to accept and sell Bitcoins in New York City. There are also worldwide franchising opportunities available, and we did eat there for the conference, and it was delicious. And bitbrew.net.
All coffee orders are roasted in order to guarantee the freshest possible product. They do have organic and fair trade coffees, as well as rare and exotic high-end varieties like the Jamaican Blue Mountain, that's not a blend, and Darwinian Delight from the Galapagos Island Estate. If you were in the Bitcoin conference, the first uh, few people were able to get free samples of Darwinian Delight, some decaf and other varieties. They do have whole bean or ground ready to order, now shipping internationally at a flat rate, and everything is sold exclusively for Bitcoins using static pricing. Again, that's bitbrew.net. Thank you.